Well, that was more like it last week. Plenty of offense and actually almost a challenge to pick which play we would dig into as far as our chalk talk this week. But ultimately, I went with the two-point play. Early in the third quarter, paying off the 84-yard drive. You know, really one of the best drives of the season. Again, an excellent mix, overcoming some penalties on that drive. And then capping it all off with a two-point play. And man, did I love a lot of things with this play. I love the options. Right, You're going to hear... Uh, amateur analysts like myself or armchair quarterbacks when you get into these two-point plays or big plays down around the goal line or maybe a play I don't know in a Super Bowl years ago and when you get down there just don't be so one-dimensional to just have one choice and allow that defense to dictate you know you as an offense want to be the one that's always dictating you're the one that's in charge you're calling the play you want the defense to react off of you and that was exactly the case I think with this two-point play few things to consider pre-snap number one you get a choice on these two-point plays where you want the ball and the Seahawks put the ball on the left hash to create plenty of room to the field that was the first little tell of where things were going to be going uh, number two you want to make sure that number three in this case, obviously, and 89 have a chance. Because to me, they're still your two most proven players. They're your two veteran guys. You want them to have every opportunity to find success. And while everybody wants to get 88 going, which is great, and obviously Chris Carson was phenomenal before breaking his leg, ultimately this team's going to go as far in my book as number three and 89 take them. And I love the fact that this two-point play, which I guess is my last point pre-snap, is something that's been in the plan for weeks, something that you have worked on through the off season, something that you've worked on through training camp. You put those two point plays together and there's usually two or three of them uh, that you have worked on over the course of the preseason into the regular season. And then based on your opponent, you know, getting to the matchup you think you can take advantage of. And that's exactly what they did with this two point play. They dictated. They don't allow that defense to dictate. And even though the Colts are going to come up here and run a zero blitz, Right? Some people call it a casino because you are rolling the dice, man. You are rolling the dice that we're going all out. There is nobody left at home. It's going to be man coverage outside, and we're going to have one, if not two, coming free that you can't block. And that's exactly what Indy does. They bring the zero blitz, and they bring it from everywhere. And in this case, you know, there's going to be uh, the strong safety who comes free at Russell. He's coming. There, there's just simply not enough manpower to block everybody. They're always going to have one more, but they're also going to leave you in one-on-one -on -one situations, one-on-one -on -one press. And this was such an easy read for Russell before the snap. He knows exactly what he's getting. Uh, I'll, I'll stay with the casino in the, in the reference. Um, they don't care. They showed their cards. We're coming at you. And in this case, what I love is you have options. You're not stuck. In many ways, it's almost a triple option. They run a little zone read. That would have been option number one. If it wasn't pressure look, uh, he could have handed it. Number two would be Russell keeping it. Uh, and then number three is ultimately the route combination here with Tyler and Doug, and that's what wins this play. Uh, one's dead, you know you're not handing it, uh, end up coming free up the middle. Uh, two's dead because Russell knows this guy's unblocked coming off the edge. But number three was open, and number three was open uh, because Doug and Tyler timed this beautifully. Uh, I don't normally take Chalk Talk to tell a story, but I think it fits in this case. Uh, when I had come back from Indianapolis to Seattle, Mike Holmgren had said, hey, uh, draw up this play that you guys ran all the time, that Peyton and Marvin ran all the time. And it wasn't this play per se, but it was a little play they called uh, Why Dig? And it was just a little in route by Marvin. And it's going to come into play here as far as the timing because I drew it up and I said, well, you know, they tied in free releases and this route's here and, the, and this route's five yards. But Marvin really had a lot of freedom, Marvin Harrison. And sometimes it'd be two yards and sometimes it'd be five yards, sometimes it'd be three yards. And uh, for Mike Holmgren in the West Coast system, that wasn't going to work. We don't do those things. Everything is precise. Everything has uh, tremendous timing and precision with it. Well, this is a little bit like the Indianapolis Colts play because ultimately on paper, it's a little corner route by Doug and a little in route by Tyler. But the whole key to this play, just like Marvin Harrison catching 70 of those routes on that little in route, was sometimes it's one yard, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five. And you are going to dictate and make sure that these two guys in press coverage they can't be right. And Tyler times it beautifully. And I'm telling you, if you go back and watch this play, his timing of getting into the view of this guy right here and causing him to freeze for just a second and him to freeze allows Doug to juke, get to the corner, and ultimately no one there. You make these two guys wrong. They can't be right. You dictate through the timing of that route 
through that in route in the corner to confuse and make sure these two guys can't be on the same page. And if they pass it off, which they were trying to do, and he's going to take the in and he's going to get underneath, the timing of Tyler Lockett, the exact precision and that feel that he had to get into the view of that corner, free dug up to be wide open, and ultimately you can't be right. The elite offenses in this league, whether it was Atlanta last year, whether it's the Green Bay Packers, whether it's Tom Brady, that defense cannot dictate, that defense cannot be right, and this two-point play indicative of that.